Okay, I cannot have the light on in this bathroom without the fan blowing, so it, it's just really loud. So I hope this is clear enough. This test I took yesterday when I was having cramping. I started cramping in the morning and I was like, what's going on? And I mean, <laughs> I mean, it was totally ovulation cramping and it hasn't, it's been so long and I double checked and I think I'm cycle day 34 right now. So I obviously missed an ovulation back uh, several weeks ago. So anyway, this is this came up a 0.8, but only after it had dried looking like, like I just took the picture. So this is probably the worst ovulation testing I've ever done, only because, you know, I did ovulation testing. So this is later on in the evening last night and it's like a 0.5. Okay, and I got a haircut. It was not supposed to be this short. I really thought she was going to do like mid-neck, and she took it all the way to my jaw. <laughs> so anyway, but hair grows back. Uh, it does get curly though, so I like that it's boosting my natural curl. It's more of like a wave, but anyway. Um, so I, I, I could barely even walk across the room because of the aching in my ovaries. And I thought, wow, I'm ovulating, but I wasn't testing because I have had positive ovulation tests for the last three weeks. And I know, I knew that I kept failing to ovulate, so I'm not even posting that video because, I, I mean, I, I still have to delete all of the footage, but there's no point when I never ovulated. And, uh, this morning's temperature proved it was 97.8, which to me, for me, is an ovulation, is a, is like a 1DPO ovulation temperature because I've done BBT for the last two years. So um, if you want to learn how to do BBT, Premom has a really good video on how to do it. And so, uh, yeah, 97.8 this morning. So I ovulated yesterday and felt it, and I, I think it came out of my right ovary. Um, so anyway, I am going to go to the store later where I can talk a little bit more freely, and then I will tell you what happened. Okay, so Hannah's in the back seat, so I have to be careful with my words, but I just wanted to say that uh, for the first time in five years. So again, ovulation came out of nowhere <laughs> and I wasn't tracking because for the last three weeks it's been positive. So I just put it all away and quit testing because they were just die stealers every single time I uh, tested. And I'm out of digital tests as well and don't really care to buy any of those again, especially if it's just always gonna be positive. There's no point in having those and you know, being ex as expensive as they are. And so I uh, totally had ovulation cramping yesterday and I told my husband. And so he said, let's try. <laughs> or I said, I said, you wanna try and he didn't care. Um, so we tried for the first time in five years. And the thing is, I mean, his last test five years ago showed um, next to nothing. Um, blank sterile and so you know sometimes that does happen and sometimes men can recover from that I doesn't hurt even though he, he's not been taking any medication he's not been doing any of the things that would <laughs> make it better but um, so you know you just never know so you know, miracles do happen the body is miraculous and can heal itself sometimes and you never know maybe maybe he was in a stressful slump and uh i mean if you've seen uh rochelle and justin's video um where they got pregnant naturally uh, he was diagnosed with a uh, low count so uh whatever happened happened and he had a rebound or he had he was healed for <laughs> he had a comeback so <laughs> I don't know I think anything is possible at this point I'm you know I could very well have uh, 
we could have very well gotten a miracle here. Who knows? So I'm hoping for that. Either way, um, when so in two weeks, if my cycle starts, I will uh, make an appointment to get my IVF testing done so that I can be ready to go. CNY announced in an email that they are having a drawing for a free IVF cycle. So I am so excited about that. And so I'm going to apply and hopefully win it. <laughs> that would be amazing because, you know, it's just, I have paid so much money over the years and I just, that would be awesome. And then either way, if I manage to have my own egg retrieval and it doesn't work out and none of them are normal, then I will move forward with the embryo adoption. So I'm excited about that and hopefully that will be all get going here in the next few weeks. So that is my update. Uh, I basically have two weeks to wait until a period may or may not start and then I will be able to contact the clinic and get the necessary testing done to proceed. Okay, so that is so dark again. Um, it's a 0.75 on the pre-mom app. So it's like I'm going right back up. I think I peaked, well, I didn't peak. Um, I think I mentioned that before. So I think the highest reading that I was able to get without testing beforehand was a 0.8. Okay, so looks like it's going back up. Um, I don't think I will ever do another at-home insemination again. And the reason is it is way too stressful and it's too hard to predict when ovulation is approaching. I can, I can tell you when it should be, I can tell you when I think it would be, but it's just this last time, I never ovulated until last Friday, and that was cycle day 30, so I mean, it's, I should be, I should be at another ovulation, which, you know, I did ovulate on Friday, so, um, it's, you know, blasting the air conditioning, so it's just getting too hard to predict, uh, temperature has been low for weeks, and ovulation tests have been positive for weeks, like, multiple times a day, several days, well, three weeks in a row, every time I would test, it would be a dye stealer, a dye stealing positive. I think I quit testing with the digital around day eight or nine of, of being positive. Um, so, you know, those are expensive. So why keep testing if they're just going to be positive all the time? And so, yeah, I think I'm done with the Facebook donor because that was the only other way I, that was the, that was the last way that I was doing at home insemination. So I'm pretty sure I'm done with him. <laughs> Unless he wants to give me free sperm at this point. I doubt it. <laughs> Talk about <laughs> taking it to a whole nother level. Like <laughs> I'll just give you sperm. You've worked, you know, you, you've suffered long enough. So, um, but yeah, so he, you know, he's not going to do that. Nice guy, really nice guy. So I'm going to, uh, so I'm going to start testing at 90 PO and just hope and pray for a, an absolute miracle from God. That would be an insane. I, I thought about that. It's like, we haven't tested in five years. Did he recover? Does he have sperm? Did he have sperm on Friday? Like, because there has not been, he did not do well being under that kind of pressure and it really, um, screwed up our marriage for sure. And so now we're, I think we're healing from that and we're, we're getting better at being back together again like um you know he he was upset because he he you know f figured that I'm not I'm not what he wants and everything and so he was just like you know let's just get a divorce and everything and I'm like it, it's you know but I explained all that in my <laughs> fertility video of just the ups and downs of well there was never an up we were always down and so it's like trying to recover from that and stay together is really hard. I'm, I'm glad we stayed together, you know, and I, 
I think just how awesome would that be, you know, to after all these years and after all the at-home inseminations with donor sperm, to actually have him recover without us knowing and to get pregnant with each other in the end. That would be so cool. If that doesn't happen, I will know by 9, 10, 11 DPO. So I will bring you along with me for that. And then I will bring you along with me for my fertility testing at CNY. And I am really excited about getting started with IVF. I'm, I'm ready to get going on this pregnancy. Uh, and, you know, either with my own child or with the, uh, the girls. I still want to transfer both and I have been warned against that by the doctor saying look you know we we recommend doing one because there have been cases where a day five blastocyst has split at the very last second on day five and it split into identical twins and I actually watched a video I think it was recorded for the first time ever caught on tape of of a day five blastocyst actually splitting. So, you know, that's when they freeze them. Day five, it's a blastocyst, freeze it, uh, save it for transfer, and then thaw it out and zip. <laughs> and so, and if the other baby were to make it, then I could have, and if the other baby did that, then I would have quadruplets and I'd have to start my own show. But so anyway, I just, you know, that's a lot. I, I feel like my body could handle it. I, you know, I, I don't want to put any babies in danger, but I want both girls. I'm still pushing for that. It's a matter of wanting both girls. And I, I just, you know, I can't, there's plenty of room in my uterus. There's plenty of room in my body to do it. I want both girls. And another thing is if I do one at a time, I won't be able to have the other one because by then I would be 49 and I, you know, cause I'm 46 now. So I'm in, I would give birth at 47 and then to wait a year. So we're looking at 48 to get pregnant again and give birth at 49, almost 50 years old. I know there are girls out there doing it and God bless them. But, um, I, I, I just, I don't want to get up that high in age and, and have a, I just don't really want, you know, a one-year-old at 50, you know, it, it's, you know, I just want to have one more baby, um, or the two. I would just like the two right now, just do it and, you know, just keep working out, exercising, you know, they keep you young. I will tell you that I do, you know, Hannah keeps me running around. So, uh, you know, it, you just, you got to, stay in shape you got to work out exercise and eat right so that you can keep up with your kids <laughs> so anyway I, you know it's it's inspiring and it's motivating to take care of yourself because if you don't take care of yourself you can't take care of anybody else and you can't take care of your children if you're out of shape and beat down and sick and whatever so yeah it's definitely motivating to to be healthy all right, well, that is it for this video. I ask you guys to just pray for me, pray that there was sperm there and that I am pregnant naturally. I will see you again at 90 PO and we will find out together. And if not, the, then we'll move forward to the IVF. All right, I will see you guys soon, bye.